Amen. The Lord is doing much among us. The Lord is doing much to ensure we have the knowledge of his word. We preach the word and the word is recorded for us so that we can get this word and listen to them at home. So we should have more than a thousand messages. Each one is unique. You will not listen to this and think that the other one will be less than it. Rather, the other one is greater than it. All as it is, it's left for you to think. And these messages cover various aspects of life and Christianity. More than that, we also put the, some of these messages, we transcribe them into books and add more to them so that you could have full understanding what maybe in preaching we run fast and not cover. We make the books to be full. I want to let you know the number of books that the ministry has that you can have access to. Each one is unique. One, worshiping God in the beauty of holiness. A great book. Number two, escaping hellfire and entering heaven made simple. This went under the title Divine Revelation of God's Holiness and Judgment. But now it is under the title Escaping Hellfire and Entering Heaven Made Simple. We have the daily devotional. It's available for you to key into for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and for divine inspiration every day. We have marriage in biblical perspective that will give you idea on marriage, of knowledge on marriage. Number two, we have pure and corrupt dance in the Bible. A small book that was extracted from worshiping God in the beauty of holiness. We have delightful revelation of heaven and how to get there. You know how great that book is. We have a generation in quest for miracles. This uh, also is an extract, but not fully from worshiping God in the beauty of holiness. It was a preached message that is uh, in that book. Number eight, we have the peril of ignorance among Christ's followers. The peril of, Christ fo of ignorance among Christ's followers. The danger of ignorance. Number nine, scriptural examination of handkerchief, apron, water, and other substances in gospel miracles. In the churches today, they use salt, they use water, they use handkerchief and all. These are substances that they use for miracles. What does the Bible say about these things? So it's available for you. Of course, it's another extract from worshiping God in the beauty of holiness. Number 10, divine revelation and scriptural exposition on believers' holiness in clothing and adornment. This is a standard book. You don't find the like 
in the bookshops worldwide. You don't find the lie that will bring up the holiness of God, the holiness he demands in all completeness, both by doctrine and by divine revelation, to make a man of a woman of God perfect, to inspire a man of God to all righteous preaching and teaching. Number 11, uh, contending against denominational barriers. This one, we have also put it into um, ho um, I will tell you the, time, the other book that covers this. Number 12, marital sex, childbearing, adoption, and family planning. The, the churches constantly talk about this. We have brought these things out, marital sex, childbearing, adoption, and family planning in a biblical way to provide answers to your needs. Get the book. You, it will improve your family life. Then, number 12, purify yourself. You have known about purify yourself. Number 14, the key of your life is in your hand. The key of your life is in your hand. Number 15, the passion for purity or passion for purity is another great book on purity. Number 16, diligent persuasion on others for heaven-bound Christianity. Persuading others for heaven-bound Christianity. Number 16, I mean, number 17, okay, courage and boldness of holiness preachers. We have retrieved that because the English language is not good and we need to do a new work. Number 18, the doctrine of sanctification and holiness. Again, we have retrieved this one because the English language is not okay. Is this one uh, we will have to re-edit? Edit it. I trust God. Number 19. Serving God in righteousness and holiness. Number 20. The dressing of a godly woman. It's a similar book compared to adornment. Number 21. Prophetic revelation on prominent Nigerian preachers. Number 22. Truth, holiness, and the world in Christian given. Truth, holiness, and reward in Christian given. Number 23, passion and wisdom for soul winning in righteous and holy Christians. Passion and wisdom for soul winning in righteous and holy Christians. Number 24, praise worship of the holy God. It's an extract from worshiping God in the beauty of holiness. Number 25, denominationalism in the light of holiness revival movement worldwide. So it has taken over contending for, for denominational barriers. Number 26, raising up godly children for Jesus which is the book we hope to review. Number 27, understanding the trinity of God, of the Godhead. How you can know the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is one person. Number 28, the doctrine of restitution for uh, heaven, for holiness, for your holiness and heaven. The doctrine of restitution for your holiness and heaven. Number 29, the challenge of children to Christian parents. The challenge of children to Christian parents. Uh, number 30, restitution in the old, scriptural restitution in the Old and New Testament. 
Number 31 is coming up. Number 32 is coming up. We're reviewing number 32 tomorrow, which is be careful with your marriage because of heaven. That one is coming up tomorrow. We shall be reviewing it. And they are going to be sending it from the publisher this night. So that is the one will be given to you as a gift tomorrow. And more others, some have not been written down here, and some are still getting ready to be published. We are going to produce soon for you, we have started the work on Christianity and medicine to give you understanding on Christian approach to medicine. We have other ones coming up for your young children. We have not mentioned here uh, Joseph, the youth with a bright future. That's number 31. We have also um, Timothy, the youth trained in the scriptures. That's number 32. They are many. They are going. By the time you come in August, you will see books like this. Amen. And we desire that you who have come from other countries should go with sufficient books to your country. We have done much production. Ah, I've even forgotten number 34 or what? Uh, the holy life and ministry of a true preacher. That is an autobiography of myself. So that is also there. Uh, one of our brothers is making effort to also write a biography of Pastor Paul Rica, a biography of Sister Linda. So these ones are also on their way. Books are on your way. Let's rise up and thank God for these books. They are a store of wisdom, knowledge and understanding about God. Begin to thank the Lord for them. Open your mouth and worship. We want to know God more. We want to increase in the knowledge of God, in the knowledge of his word, in the knowledge of his ways. Let us pray. God, we want to know you. I want to know you. I want to love you. I want to thank you. I want to praise you more and more. I want to praise you more and more. God, give me the knowledge, your knowledge. Give me the knowledge of your world. Thank you, Father. Divine Father, teach your children. Give your children the knowledge of your world. Give your children the knowledge of your world. Let them know the Lord. Let them know your ways. Let them know your truth. Oh, my Father, send the light. Send your understanding among us. May we know the Lord. May, you, may we know your ways. May we know the truth. We want to serve you more and more. We want to love you more and more. We want to preach you more and more. Oh Lord, open our understanding that we may understand the Lord. Open our understanding so we can understand the Lord. We want to know your ways. Show us now your glory. Creator, open our hearts. Creator, open our hearts. Show us now your glory. Show us now your glory. Show us now your glory. Jesus, we want to know you. We want to understand our God. Lord, we want to serve you. 
Lord, we want to belong to you. We want to serve you. We want to promote you. We want to promote our goal. We want to promote our goal. We want to promote our goal. We want to lift you up higher. Give us understanding. We will serve you with our whole heart. Give us understanding. We will serve you with our whole heart. Lord, teach us your ways. Teach us your word. Teach us your will. <laughs> Lord, your children are ready. They will do it. Let the power of the Lord come upon us. Let the glory of the Lord come upon us. Let the name of the Lord ring strong over our lives. Let the name of the Lord reign, reign, reign among us. Oh, Lord Jesus. We praise you. We will praise you more and more. We will praise you more and more. We will serve you more and more. We will obey you more and more. Our creator. Our savior. Our Lord. We need you. We need you. We need you. We need you, we need you in our way. We need you in our life. We need the Lord. We need the Lord. We need the Lord. We need the Lord. We want to see you. We want to see your glory. We want to see your glory. We want to see your majesty. Take away the darkness of our mind. Take away the darkness of our mind. Take away the darkness of our mind. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Take away. The darkness of our mind. Give me understanding. I will serve you with my whole heart. Give me understanding. I will serve you with my whole heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, the Lord is teaching us on how to care for our children so that they don't go to hellfire. Let us pray that our eyes will open. We will receive new lights from God on how to take care of our children. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, Give us new lights on ch child training that we may raise godly children for Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for answering. Yes, Lord, do it.
Take away the veil from the minds of the children. Oh Lord, let the light of this truth shine. In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty Father, we are blessing you. We thank you because you are giving us required knowledge for our perfection. Required knowledge for our fruitfulness. Now, you have sent us knowledge in this book, Raising Up Godly Children for Jesus. To raise up children, our children, for your glory, for your use in this end time, and to fight against the devil to preserve our children from the present demonism, demonization going on in the world. Father, be with us in this matter of children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, we are reviewing this book titled Raising Up Godly Children for Jesus. Raising Up Godly Children for Jesus. Now, this book has the following table of contents. Chapter 1 God is the giver of children. Chapter 1.1 1 .1, Every child given by God has a purpose to fulfill according to God's will, in his will. Chapter 1, verse 2. Untrained children are tools in Satan's hands for evil works. Another subtitle. 3. Your carelessness is responsible for your child's foolishness. Subtitle 4. The end time spirit is taking its toll on untrained children. Chapter 2. Sources of corruption in children and youths. Chapter 2, subsection 1. Peer group pressure. Music. Television. Films. Movies. The internet. The institutions. Restaurants and billboards. The government. False churches and pastors. Poverty. Wayward parents, devil's oppression, catch them young. These are subtopics. In chapter 3, lead your children to Jesus for their salvation. Subtopics, about four subtopics. Number one, follow God's instruction and do them. Two, lead your children to the Lord Jesus. Three, train up your child. Number four, teach the children God's word. These are subsections you read in the book. Chapter 4. Apply scriptural discipline on your children. Chapter 4, subsection 1. Do not leave children all by themselves. Number 2. Apply family planning method appropriate to you. Number 3. Discipline the children in a godly way. Number 4. Discipline your children while there is hope. Subsection 5, support your spouse in the work of child, child discipline. Subsection 6, know that children are bound to be foolish. Subsection 7, dis disobey ungodly rules of the government. And subsection 8, the rod is part of the gospel of Jesus. Chapter 5, ask God for wisdom in child training. Subsection 1, not all correction involves the use or involve the use of a cane. Subsection 2. Love all your children equally. 
Subsection 3, do not use evil weights on your children. Four, sacrifice, a sacrifice for the welfare of your children. Five, learn to play with your children. Chapter 6, train your children by God's word and prayer. 6.1, lead your children on the path of truth. Point 2, pray always for your children. Chapter 7, raising up godly children. 7.1, child training is the responsibility of the Christian society. 7.2, be a friend to your child. 7.3, you can train your relations too. 7.4, you can adopt or train children in orphanages. Chapter, six, I mean chapter 8, the role of the church in raising godly children. Subsection 1, communication skill. Chapter 2, child, children teachers. Chapter 3, effective evangelism materials and teaching aids. Number 4, a good ch children church. Number five, special program. Number six, the church should preach to and teach the parents. Number seven, the church should place on faithful parents on church discipline. Number eight, the church should organize special prayers and intercession for children. Number nine, the church should fight against witchcraft activities and initiation. Number ten, demonic agents among the teachers and children and children should be removed from the fold to preserve the faith of children. Number 11, the prayer warriors of the church should visit the children from time to time to pray over them and to handle demonic cases among them. Chapter 7, number chapter 9, other agencies of child training. Agencies number 1, the school. Number two, the brotherhood. Number three, orphanage, orphanage home. Chapter 10, God's prophetic message to a man of God and his wife on their children. So these are all in this book. You cannot be the same. Something must happen to your children. Something, a change must come upon the lives of the children. Introduction. Introduction. This book is an in-depth study on child raising and training. It centers on the commitment, commandment and wisdom of the Holy Scripture on raising up godly children for God and the society. The book is loaded with the powers of Scripture that will com compel parents into appropriate actions towards their children in the fear of God. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 15 to 17. 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 15 to 17. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Follow the scriptural guidance provided in this book and make this your handbook on child raising and training. And you will have testimonies to give on God's conversion and commitment to, godly, to godliness amongst your children. Now, we go to chapter 1. God is the giver of children. Chapter 1.1. Every child given by God has a purpose to fulfill in his life. God is the giver of children. He gives them by his own grace to mankind. Children are ignorant innocent. They are ignorant, innocent little human beings, male and female, conceived and brought into this world of sin and Satan in order to fulfill the will of God, their creator. God gave them for a purpose 
to fulfill his will. That is why you should not look commonly on the child God gave you. He is given to you by the grace of God to fulfill the will of God. God doesn't do anything for nothing. All his creation has a purpose. That's why those who do abortion are hurting God. Because the child that is coming is coming with a purpose. Yes. You think that we are many in this come. Or maybe next time, fewer people shall come. By the time you come, next time, accommodation has increased. More spaces have been enlarged. Getting ready for you. And more others. So we, we have vision in what we are doing. God has vision in the children he is giving to you. Amen? Amen. Number two, untrained children are tools in Satan's hands for evil works. When children are left alone without godly training, without the salvation that is in Christ, they naturally develop evil and wicked hearts and live in the society as wicked men and women, disobedient men and women, completely ignorant of God. If nothing is done to the child that God has given you, if that child is left alone without training in godliness, he or she will get corrupted. If you cook your food or soup, and leave it without appropriate care, it will become corrupt with time because the atmosphere has corrupting powers that corrupt whatever is improperly exposed to it. So also does the force of evil in the world make children naturally go off the track of morality. The power of sin that is in children, make them turn off from God as they grow up. Jesus called some people children of Satan because of their character and hatred of God. It's natural. Leave that your child and do nothing to improve him, to teach her, to raise her up, direct her. The child will grow up to be evil. Just as the food you cook it's not put in fridge. It's not warm up. No, you don't do anything practical on the food. It will spoil. That, that is it on children. But if you take good care of the food you cook, the soup, it can stay for days. It can stay for weeks. It can even stay for months. If you take good care, put it in the freezer. If you take good care of your children, they will be well behaved. They will grow up well and behave well. That's what we are saying. Otherwise, your, ch your child will be labeled a child of the devil. Yes, a child of the devil. That's what we want to know. In fact, in Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 13, the Bible says, Certain men, the children of Belial, are gone out from among you and have withdrawn the inhabitants of their city, saying, let us go and serve other gods, which ye have not known. God calls them, the Bible calls them children of Satan. How should your child be addressed this way? These people are dressed as children of Satan. Were children God graciously gave to their parents, but were not given godly training. They were left to themselves. That is it. Yes, subtopic three, your carelessness is responsible for your child's foolishness. King Solomon passed by the vineyard of a man lacking understanding. And when he looked, he saw that the walls of the vineyard had been broken down. The walls that prevented animals from entering in had been broken down because there was no repair, no attention given to it, no maintenance. And Solomon saw that the condition of this vineyard was because the vineyard was abandoned by the owner 
As he looked at it, he knew who the owner of the vineyard was, a lazy man. One that loved sleep, leisure, pleasure, and did not want to fatigue himself. His vineyard brought shame and reproach to him. Yes. His vineyard brought reproach. In the same way the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 17, verse 21, He that begetted a fool doeth it to his own sorrow. And the father of a fool had no joy. If your, fa if your son, because he's abandoned, is an robber, what joy do you have? If your daughter, because he's abandoned, becomes a harlot on the street, what joy do you have? What about these ones that, that walk on mini skates and pants, rough dressing? trousers on the streets, and your daughter is one of them. What joy do you have? If your child is a foolish child or a wayward child, you will have no pleasure in him. You will be in sorrow. But then, what caused the child to be a fool? You were responsible. You did not care for that child that was graciously given to you. Yes. The Proverbs 17.25 says, A foolish son is a grief to his father, and bitterness to her that bear him. A, an untrained child, a stubborn child, a, 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 a sinful child, a wicked child, an evil child is a shame to the father. It's bitterness to the mother. A stubborn child, a wicked and disobedient child causing trouble in the house and in the society. It's a grief to the father. He causes bitterness of heart to his mother. Many parents today are in sorrow because of their children. The enemy is plaguing families and marriages a lot in this area. Many parents wished they did not have children because of the life of their children. They are always being put to shame. <laughs> Yes, they are always being put to shame. The mother will enter into the room and cry as people meet her and say, so that child, that stubborn child is your, child, is your son. Take care of your son. The mother is in shame. She is in bitterness because of the activities of Satan that have increased greatly in these last days. Families. Parents and the society are spending their time in sorrows. Even brothers and sisters, children of the same father and mother are lamenting because of the behavior of their siblings. Come, weep with this man in the book of Lamentation. In Lamentation chapter 1 verse 16, cry with this man because of children. Cry with him. In Lamentation 1.16, For these things I weep, mine eyes, mine eye running down with, tea, with water, because the comforter that shall relieve my soul is far from me. My children are desolate because the enemy has prevailed. What is this man crying? The father of children is saying, My children have become useless. I gave birth to children but they have become something else. They became scorpions and serpents. My enemy has prevailed. Satan has laid his hands upon my children. My eyes run down with water. I am crying. I am weeping. That the voice of a father, the voice of a mother, yes, what do we say of the single parent, a mother that does not have a husband to help her care for these children? Oh, what about the widow that does not have the father to help her care for these children? The children would oppress their mother. They despise their mother. She laments the enemy has prevailed. The children are not hearing me. For this I weep, I cry. Lamentation 2.11, my eyes do fail with tears. My bowels are troubled. 
My liver is poured upon the earth for the destruction of the daughter of my people because the children and the suckling swoon in the streets of the city. See them, they're just moving like ants, moving on the ground. Wasted children, hopeless children on the streets. This is an observer that looked to the streets and saw wayward children. He saw corrupt children on the streets in their evil character, wickedness, evil dressing, and nakedness. He said, I cry. Tears were falling from my eyes. I cried out my strength because the children, because of the children, and the circling soon in the streets of the city. You can now see the situation. Stubborn children, wicked children, wayward children, disobedient children, ungodly children, fighting against God and righteousness. As the people of God gathered to go, gather, yes, as the people of God gather, these wayward, stubborn, wicked children, they go there with occultic powers to disrupt them. They go there to steal phones, to go and steal telephones, I mean, handsets. They go there to be, to be stealing money. It's your child among, this, this, uh, among those who disrupt God's work, going from churches, breaking even to churches. They have joined the army of Satan. Your son is even looking for you to kill. It is a sorrowful thing. Satan is behind this matter. For the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Woman of God, man of God, how did your son fall into the hands of thieves? How did your daughter fall into the hands of thieves? They are training them to steal. And they themselves are training others to do evil. They smoke marijuana. And they take others. They train others to do it. They take drugs. Looking for foolish. I mean, they look foolish and stupid on the streets. I pray that God will wipe away your tears. May the Lord bring an end to this shame. I pray that the other children you are giving attention to will not get corrupted in your hand in Jesus' name. It's a serious case. The end time spirit is taking its toll on untrained children. The situation is worse at this time, at this end time. Yes, 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5 says, This do also. That in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Disobedient children, no regard for parents. Your daughter is ready to fight you, to throw you down and sit upon you and say, shut up this your mouth. I'm telling you, what a terrible thing. Speaking rudely to you, Saying, do not talk like this to me again. Promise me now. Otherwise, I will leave the home. It is as bad as that. Your son is ready to fight you. He learned it from the wicked world. They have taught him how to do it. So, he cannot listen to you anymore. He cannot wash your clothes again. He cannot send, he, he cannot send in fact, you cannot send him on errands again. You cannot, I mean, he cannot join you in doing any work. He cannot be told when to sleep or when to wake up. He does not want to go to school. And you cannot compel him. If he goes to school, he does as he likes over there. The last days. Having a form of godliness. But denying the power thereof. The ones that come to church have no Christianity in their lives. They do not play. Yes. 
They do, I mean, ask, check up. Do they not play in the choir and sit and, and still commit immorality and incest? They are choir members. They go to, that's to please themselves. But they do commit every kind of sin. See the dressing they even put on to be in the choir. They sing in the choir. Are they original children there? There is a God that sees. There is a God that is watching. They do, they do many evil things that one will say, Ah, are you not the one in the choir? But why are you like this? The enemy has done this. We are in the last days. We are in the last days. Chapter 2. Sources of corruption in children and youths. What are the things that have, that have affected the lives of youths and children? Number one, the peer group. Because your child must have friends. Friends teach one another evil. Your daughter belongs to a peer group and is influenced by some friends. How can she keep virginity anymore? When her friend of 14 years said, what are you keeping it for? You are a shame to the society. You are not a woman yet. How can you be boasting of being a virgin at 15? You are not a woman yet. And they begin to laugh at her. Her friend then suggests, I will provide a man for you. Remove this shame from us. You have, you have not seen the sweetness of life. That's what they're telling your daughter. At the age of 14, her friends in school. Yeah. You have not seen the sweetness of life. That is the, the preacher on your innocent child. That is peer group to the young man that has never slept with a woman. The friends are saying, what? Then you are not a man. Come, let me show you how to do it. Mm. That is what is going on. Peer group, boys and girls that have no parents, that have no godly parents, that have been left to themselves, are a shame to the society and to their parents. Yes, they are a shame. They are now the best friends of your children. These wayward boys are the best friends of your children. The pussycat in your house has gone to pick a lizard and is bringing it into the palo. He has even caught a snake and is bringing it to the house to eat it in the house because you own the pussycat. You see that terrible type of thing, that terrible peer group, boys and girls who have no parents are affecting your children. They are the ones teaching them wickedness. They're the ones training them how to do evil. They teach them how to commit immorality and how to steal. Peer group. Amnon and had a friend. Jonadab was his name. A very intelligent, intelligently evil boy. Jonadab, the friend, taught Amnon how to commit immorality with his sister. He said, I will give you the formula. Very cheap. You look foolish, okay? Go and lie down and tell your father you are sick. And also say that only your sister Tama can prepare the type of meal that will give you taste. That will make your father come to you. Your father will accept your request. Then you can have her. <laughs> he, he touched him and said, boy, and that is how. That boy went off and died eventually. I'm telling you a problem. God, help your children. I say, God, help your children. The matter is too terrible. The matter is too terrible. The matter is so bad that we need the help of God. That is the tension your child is facing. What about music? I'm talking about things that corrupt children. What about music? The devil has gotten hold of music. Music is the most appealing thing to the flesh. It makes people dance, sing rough words, and speak slangs. The music of our day goes with pornography. The musicians bring naked women and actual acts of immorality into the music. The people sing and they sing, hey, singing and dancing in the contemporary music. 
Those that do so are stars. Your child wants to be a star also. Your child wants to be a celebrity. So he thinks, I can do what this boy is doing. Your daughter is thinking, I can do what this girl is doing. I can be like her. Yes, it pays. It gives much money. They buy car. They build house. I can be like her. Is it not to expose my nakedness? Is it not to allow them to snap me, then I get money? That is what peer group music is doing. What about the television? Television has become a nanny. It has taken over the family. Parents tell their children, watch and do not cry. Watch, do not mind eating food. The child really will not bother about eating food. In these days of walk, 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 they set a television in the front of the child and say, here is it, have your favorite stations, go ahead, watch until I come back. That is a school the child is going through in the house. He is watching, and the world and Satan are ready to train him. When you return, he begins to say, Choo, choo, choo. You say, What is happening here? He has learned it and is practicing it. Yes, he can take a knife. I heard of a child that took a knife and killed the, the sister, young one. It's chew, chaw, because they learn it. Some will go into incest because they have learned it in the television. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 101 verse 3, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave unto me. When children, a boy and a girl who are brother and sister have watched pornography, no matter how short the sin is, they will want to practice it. They will say, the man did like this. And the woman also opened like this. Before you know it, they will do like this and open like that. And they are gone. Yes, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. What happened again? Films, movies, films of crime, witchcraft, and pornographies are available in the market. Children know when and how to get and buy them. And when you are sleeping, they watch them and learn witchcraft. They watch power past power. What your eyes see, your heart desires. They watch sexual performance going on live in various forms. How can they watch those things and not be corrupted by them? When you come to the house where, where a nice meal is being prepared, your mouth salivates. The saliva is formed by itself. The heart begins to win, to wish for the meal. That is so with the children. As they watch it, their body gets stronger and stiff. Many are exposed to these things. Right from childhood, in about five years to come, we shall have a terrible war because these things they are watching is going to form, form their life. I'm telling you, having eyes full of adultery and I cannot cease from evil, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practice, cursed children. The internet, children can easily have access to the internet on their phones. They can ac access it on their computers. They go to the sites where the devil has arranged wicked things. All these things Satan has arranged to expose them to wickedness. How to be initiated into witchcraft is clearly there. If you want to join Illuminati, it is there. The child is innocently going into those sides. And before you know it, he is initiated. You say, I'm not a witch. My husband is not a wizard. What happened to you? It is internet. That is the world we are living in. Oh, many parents' eyes are running down with water. Their eyes are running down with water for shame and sorrow because of their children. More than parental shame and sorrow is the judgment of hellfire waiting for these children. It's a bad thing. What about the institutions? 
the schools. Corruption in schools. Schools are given to immorality. Immorality with the teachers to pass exams. The students commit immorality with one another for pleasure. The students practice masturbation, oral sex, homosexuality, lesbianism, pornography, and every kind of sex, sex every kind of sexual life freely. The environment is free and safe. Only the determined can escape pollution in schools. The miniskirts given to female students in the primary and secondary schools as uniforms are meant to expose their nakedness and promote immorality right early, unawares to them. The schools have joined the same thing. If you have a school, are you not teaching in a school? See, how deep is the skirt standing even before the knees? When they sit down, the boys look straight into their private path. And everybody is tensed up. They train these people in immorality. Schools and parents, and I'm not saying anything. Parents will go to parents, teachers, uh, association and say nothing to that school about the uniform of the school, how they're exposing the children, training them on sexual immorality. Your daughter will become used to nakedness. Your boy will become used to tension that is always seeing nakedness. She, the boy is always seeing nakedness of his classmates, nakedness constantly. He's always tense. His thoughts are on sex all the time. Even on the streets, the thoughts are on sex. Incest will happen. Because if he has the slightest chance, he will go for it. And that's what is happening in schools. That is what schools are doing. The matter is so terrible like that, my brother. What about restaurants and billboards? Go to the restaurant, Mr. Biggs, and some of these restaurants. You will see pornography going on there. Yes, you will see pornography just going on there. To make the people watch it live. What about the government? The government is saying, give condom to your children and give them freedom to use them. Give them liberty. If you do not give them liberty, we will handle you. The government is supporting the corruption in children. Satan has brought the government, has bought the government over. They permit both sex and witchcraft education. In the schools, sex is now one of the school subjects. The world is fighting God. The world is fighting righteousness. The world is starting with children because they know that if you want to transplant a crop, you do so when it is young. When it, it grows up, it will show no sign of transplanting. It will look normal. So they are getting these children quite young. Some of these nations are teaching witchcraft in the schools to clear out what remains of righteousness so that there will be no righteousness in this world we live in. Some nations, the government has decreed that if you beat your child, you will go to prison. Or the child will be taken away from you and be given to other parents. They have prepared mothers and built homes to accommodate your children. This is what is going on in the Western world. In some of these countries where the government has already sanctioned those laws, when the child comes to school and teachers ask, did your mother beat you? Did your father touch you? Tell me. If the child replies, yesterday my mother beat me, the next thing is that police will arrive at the, the mother's house. Because the mother has transgressed the government's rule. Your child, your child reported in school that you beat him. They can ask the child, what do we do with your mother? Now, tell us what we should do. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? A child was sitting with her mother who was partially deaf. It's a real story. In she was partially deaf in one ear. So she speaks out loud. The child did, did something and the mother shouted at her to correct her. In a short time, a policeman was knocking at the door. This is because the schools have given the children police numbers and told them, call them anytime. Should anything threaten you at home, just call the police. You know, a child, like, a child likes to practice something he learned. A policeman arrived and knocked at their door. And the mother opened the door and said, yes. The policeman said, I am invited to this house. The mother said, no, 
Nobody invited you in this house. The policeman asked, who are the people here? She replied, only myself and my eight-year-old daughter. The policeman asked the girl, girl, did you invite me here? The girl said, yes. This happened in America. The mother was shocked. The policeman asked the girl, what happened? The girl said, my mother was shouting at me. Huh. Why did you, then the police turned to the woman, why did you shout at this girl? The police questioned the woman. And then said, girl, what do we do with her? The girl said, let her go and remain in the cell for two weeks. Real story. Corruption. The world is ending. Get repented, quick. Get repented quickly. Otherwise, they will overthrow you. Walk up, rise up fast. Rise up fast. Otherwise, the world is collapsing. You have opportunity to hear the true gospel now. Grab this gospel. Don't waste time. Give your heart to it. Gather what you can gather that remains of your family. Be fast. Before these things overtake you in, this, in your country. It's on the way. It's already, the smoke, we can already feel it. Yes. And that, that, that's exactly what happened. I want her to go uh, for two weeks uh, in, in, the, in the prison. That was how the mother was taken to the, to the cell, so that she should learn her lesson. Leave this child in the evil life. Don't correct her. Leave her like that. The government is looking for wickedness. Your child will help the government to pollute this world. Why are you changing him? Why are you changing her? That is the government. The police won the woman after she completed her terms of incarceration. If you try this thing again, this child shall be taken from you. She is an American child. That is how the parents live there. They have put them in bondage. The devil is using the government because iniquity must take over the world. Are you sitting still? They are digging under you and they will soon fall you down. So you must cry to God for your salvation and that of your children. What do about false churches? I'm telling you, the plight is great. The plight is great. The wickedness is great. Even churches are doing their own. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. There are churches established just to initiate people into occultism. That's their aim. Just to initiate people. There's one of these churches. Can it be one? You know it. It's some of these They have the largest congregation. Do I use that word? Or they have great congregation. Revelation showed that they're divided into two compartments. There is where worship is going on. There is where satanism is going on. From the worship, they carry to satanism. From the worship, I'm telling you, this is what churches are doing. They are doing these things to destroy the world. Yes, that is their whole aim. The children teachers are demonic. They distribute themselves to various churches under instruction. Go and show zeal in the churches. Show them that you love children. They are there on assignment to initiate children into witchcraft. Yes. Where was your child initiated? It was in the church by children teachers. So where do you go now? Satan's ways are so many that only God can give you an escape route. The female children may be fingered by the, by the male teachers, introducing them to immorality quite early. What about uh, lesbianism? Even the female teachers can do the same in the church. The films shown and the drama taught in some of these churches steer children to evil practice. Corruption. This is the battle set against families. This is the battle set against the godly man. 
This is the battle set against the godly woman. This is the battle set against the godly church. What about poverty? This one, you participate in it. Some of you participate in this. Is it really because of poverty? No. You lack the discipline of righteousness. You lack the discipline of holiness. Poverty? Poverty, too, is playing its own role. Because of lack of money, a man and his wife and about five children, making seven persons, are sharing one room. A story was told of a child whose parents used a curtain to separate their bed from, from the children. Whenever the bed was shaking, was making noise, the boy knew that something was happening on the, on the parent's side. So the child, an intelligent one, put a mirror up directly on top of their parents, their parents' bed. He did this in a time they were not there. Set a mirror there, like a set light, on top of the bed, so that when the parents began meeting, he would be watching his parents in the mirror, performing live pornography. I'm telling you, poverty has caused that. The parents could not afford two or three rooms for the family. But most times, this is due more to ignorance than poverty. This also makes the child to see the nakedness of one another as they sleep, take bath, and change their clothes. Incest is highly promoted under this condition. Incest. You say you don't have money. I don't think that's the reason. You have never gone to cry to the church. You have never gone to cry to a servant of God. You have never gone to cry. You have never prayed to God and cry that God, my situation is sending my children to hell. Lift up your voice and cry. That poverty is from Satan. It is not from God. Lift up your voice and cry to prevent sin and wickedness. Otherwise, that poverty is the reason why you're all moving to hell. And yet, you're a woman leader. You are a pastor. You're moving to hell because you have sold your children to evil. Wayward parents. The, the, the way the parents dress, the children follow the style. They follow their parents' naked dressing. The clothes some parents buy for their children a terrible type of clothes. All these mini skirts you buy for your children. Do you remember you have boys? Do you know that your female child can sit down anyhow or lie down exposing her body and that, and that your boy will not remember that she is his sister? Some parents contribute to incest in the, in the house. Some mothers expose their nakedness to their male children to their sexual provocation in the house. The bathroom may be poorly covered, exposing the females, taking bath to their male siblings. This condition keeps the male children loaded with sexual feeling. I'm telling you, everything is corrupting everywhere. It's a bad thing. What about the devil's oppression? Catch them young. Multiplied initiation is going on. Many people want to be rich. So Satan tells them the number of people they, shall, they should initiate in order to get money. Multiplied children are being initiated into witchcraft. It is no more in those days that except your father is a wizard or your relation is a witch, you may never be initiated into witchcraft. No, it is no more like that. It is no more like that. Oh, God of heaven, we are saying this in sorrow and in pain. We are saying it in tears. Lord, we have no power, no might in this matter. If you do not arise, what shall we do? If you do not do something about this thing, like the, the king of Samaria, when someone cried and said, Help, O king! And he said, How do I help? If God does not help you, how can I help you? From the barn or from the storehouse? What shall the righteous do? Children suffer initiation into witchcraft in the house school and in the church. Terrible. 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 Christians are passing through this danger everywhere. Seek God's help. Parents are passing through this sorrow everywhere. If God does not intervene, where do we go? The world is waxing stronger in evil. Things are increasingly getting worse. Children have become Children have been laid away from early, in the early age. 
saw my initiator from the womb. It is a matter of sorrow indeed. It is a matter of concern. And the game is also being played in the house of the pastor to quench the ministry of the man of God. They tell the child, bring your mother. We will make you king. We will make you queen. Bring your father. Child, go and put this thing in your mother's food. Go and put this thing in your father's food. They threaten them. They threaten these children too, saying, we will beat you. We will kill you if you do not do it. We will kill you. So, the child does those things under threat. This is the state. The matter is bad. The case of children is bad. Our God shall reverse those things. Our God shall reverse those things. We have a God that answers prayers in heaven. If we call upon God, he will send angels to our houses. If we call upon God, he will send angels to the school of those children. If we call upon God, the Lord will change those wicked government. The Lord will do something and righteousness shall come back. Our children shall be protected. Oh Lord, do it in Jesus' name. Yes. Parents are put into various bondage by children. Some parents are put into poverty because the child is in covenant with the devil to empty the purse of the family. Some suffer sickness. This is one. The, the, some suffer sickness. This one is sick. That one is sick. The other one is sick. There's no rest. A child who caused the father to lose his job said, they told me to do this so that you will come and sit at home. Then you and mommy will be blaming each other. As you are crying in poverty, Satan is laughing. And they are promoting, they are promoting me there. Mommy, we are the one that put up, that shut up your womb. We will not give birth, you will not give birth anymore. I will be your only child. It is enough by force. Listen to God's word direct, direct. I, mean, I said, listen to God's word directing you who loves the Lord. In Isaiah 41, verse 9 to 14. I know the battle is heavy, but see what God is saying. Thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof and, uh, 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 and, and said unto thee, Thou art my servant and I have chosen thee and not cast thee away. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yeah, I will help thee. God will help you on your child. God will help you on your children. Yeah, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Some of these children have weakened your spiritual life. You can't pray. They're the ones even cooking for you. They have weakened your life. They are causing quarrels between you and your husband. Between you and your... They're just causing quarrels. They're doing this and they're laughing. But God says, God says, He will uphold you with His right hand of righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. And they that strive with thee shall perish. The God of heaven shall put power on you. Make you a victorious woman. All those forces in your house. All those forces in your family. Even the forces in the children. You will overcome them. You will overcome them. The power of the Lord shall use you. You will bind the spirits in your children. He will bind the spirits in those notorious boys and girls. The Lord shall give be with you. Even in their witchcraft covenant. You will collapse that place. By the name of Jesus. You will collapse that place. You will set fire. Anyone. Any the one that is a master over your child. That is the queen of the cause over your daughter. The Lord shall collapse that person. The Lord shall burn up that person. The Lord shall tear up that person. The Lord shall put power in your life. The Lord shall put power in your life. The Lord shall put power in your family. The Lord shall put power in the church. Victory must come to us. 
Victorious women say amen. And be ready for the battle. Be prepared for the battle. The battle is great. The battle has been brought to your house. Get ready to overcome the devil. Get ready to break him down. Amen. Amen. Yes. Lead your children to Jesus for their salvation. Chapter 3. Lead your children to Jesus. In John chapter 14 verse 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the lie. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. In Isaiah 48, verse 17 to 19, <coughs> Isaiah 48, verse 17 to 19, Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go, Oh, that thou hast hearkened to my commandments. Then hath thy peace been as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Thy seed also hath been as the sun, and the offspring of thy bowels like the gravel thereof. His name should not have been cut off or destroyed from before me. Follow the Lord. Follow divine instructions. Various plagues are being inflicted on parents. But let us go back to divine instructions on children. God, who is more powerful than Satan, has given us divine instructions. Follow them. Do not be lazy like that lazy man whose vineyard King Solomon saw. Do not be, do not be like him. Rise up and do this job otherwise. Your hope for heaven will be a mirage. Rise up and train your children and listen to what the scripture says. Do it. Do not respect the contrary decree of the government of your nation. Be wise. The way of the wise is above to deliver from evil beneath. Be wise and deliver your children. Who comes to your children? Who teaches your children? Who relates with your children? Who is a friend to your children? Monitor everything. God will help you. God who does not want you and your child to perish will stand behind you. He will put his angel in your house. You just need to obey God. Lead your child. Lead your children to the Lord Jesus. In Matthew chapter 19, 13 to 15, then were they brought, brought unto him little children that he should put his hands on them and he prayed and prayed and the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, suffer little children, allow them and forbid not to come unto me for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and departed them. Jesus said, bring those children to me Dedicate them to me. Commit those children to me. Why are you keeping them away from me? Bring them to my church. Why do you think that the gospel is not for children? Do not mind the noise that, are, that the noise they are making in the church. The angels of God are there taking care of them and helping them to pick one, pick two, pick three words from what the preacher is saying. Jesus is saying, bring those children to me. I want to lay my hands upon them. The hands that would destroy the devil in their life. The hands that would change their hearts and mind. The hands that would break the power of immorality in their body. I said, bring your children to me. I will change their vision of life. I want to use them. I want to bless them. The kingdom of God is for them. You have heard the testimony that a child of about six years was found in hellfire. A girl of eight or nine years, she, she used witchcraft to kill eight people. God says, bring 
to them to me. I will deliver them. Their mates are already in hell. Your child is not too small to go to hell because of the sin he is into, because of the initiation that has been done. Therefore, rush them to Jesus. He said, I will save them from sin. Lead them to Jesus. Ask Jesus to come into their hearts. Lead Jesus. Let Jesus come into their lives and change them. He told you to bring them to him. This is a divine instruction. Do not say my husband is the one hindering me. Take the child aside and lead him to Jesus. Do not say my wife is the one to do it. You do it. The commandment is for you to obey. Do not mind how many times the child has been led to Jesus. Continue to do so until you see the evidence. Hallelujah. The Lord must bring solution to this matter. The Lord must bring solution to this matter. And God is ready. He is the creator of those children. He will change them. He will change them. He will change them. But then you must do, you must obey him. Bring them to Jesus. Lead them to Jesus. Go and do fasting and prayer that God will help you and your children will come to him. Train up your child. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Show the child how to do it. Tell him about it. Some children may be stubborn. Continue to give them the same instructions. Do not mind their refusal, resistance, forgetfulness, or outright disobedience. With prayers, they will pick and submit. Yes, cast your bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Yes, train, training also means the person does not know how to do things. Show him how to do it. The person does not know how to drive a car, you train him. The person does not know how to construct a table as a carpenter, you train him. Training a child means you have a vision for that child. There is something, a set goal or direction you want in that child. If you do not have a vision, the wisdom of training will not come. You will not know the materials of training to use. But if you have a vision of what you want in your child, you will find the materials or tools to use. Train up a child in the way he should go. Training involves knowing the do's and don'ts. It involves impartation of knowledge. Put the right knowledge in your child. Tell your child what to do and what he is not to do. When he is old, he will not depart from it. There are people who have trained their children on how to, to prostrate and greet their elders. They prostrate to greet even to their old age to their adult age. They learn it. There are people who have trained their children on how to cook food. They, they grow up to cook fine meals that rejoice the heart. You are training them because you have a vision. You have a vision that your, ch your children should not be a shame in their husband's house. The word of God says, train up your child. That involves yourself. Involve yourself in this training. However busy you are. Employ persons in school, in church, or in your relations and professionals to assist you if you can find, if you can find them. Use good materials of training to assist you. Single parents need counseling in this area also. They may require participation of others in training their children. Such should not be ashamed to seek help from those ones from close ones for the training of their children. Teach your child the word of God. Yes, therefore, Deuteronomy 11 verse 18 to 21. Therefore, shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon your hand that they may be as frontlets between your eyes and ye shall teach them your children. Speaking of them, when ye sit in thine house. And when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, but as for you is television, you sit with your children. You watch until they become, they are asleep, waiting for hellfire. And thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thine house, and upon thy gates, that your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children. In the land which the Lord swear unto, your, unto the fathers, 
to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. Can you see now? Teach your children the word of God. Teach them all the doctrines, the doctrines of scripture, salvation, sanctification, restitution, baptism in the Holy Ghost. Teach them about the second coming of Christ. Teach them biblical marriage. Teach them about water baptism. That when they are born again, they need to be baptized in water. Teach them all the word of God. The Bible says, teaching, teaching requires wisdom. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. What will you use to, to cause the child to understand the teaching? Get the teaching aids. Get the teaching materials. Your child has been watching pornography and wrong videos. Get the educative and godly films for your children to watch. Tell them the evils in pornography and ungodly films that they are watching. Warn your children against evil. Educate them. Get them books, like the devotional books. Let the children learn how to read the devotional book every day. Let them take them to school. Yes, tell them to carry the devotional book to school. Supervise. Check whether your instruction is being followed, even in the school. Ask questions. Ask which one did you read today? What did you learn about it? Check it out. Train your children. Teach them the word of God. Get your children good Bibles. Teach them how to read the Bible. Give them assignments in the Bible and some Christian books. Let them listen to the CDs and the DVD messages on righteousness and holiness. Tell them to listen to a number of messages and take, no, take down notes. The God of heaven who asks you to do this, he will walk with you. I say he will walk with you. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. You will see children change to your surprise. They will change to your surprise. The Lord will walk with you. He will confirm your walk. He will confirm his, confirm his word that you are using. He will confirm your service with signs following. You will see the result in your children. The Lord shall confirm your service in Jesus' name. That is what God expects of you. And because now scriptural discipline Apply scriptural discipline on your children. Do not leave children all by themselves. Apply family planning method appropriate to you. If you know you will not be able to cater for many children, tell God, Lord, I want just one. I want just two. Or the number you know you can cater for. The desire of the righteous shall be granted. Apply the appropriate righteous method of family planning. Do not listen to those who are attacking family planning. They are speaking from the devil. Who does not want you to know the truth and be set free? Control the number of children you bear so that you do not live a foolish life. So that you may not live a life of sorrow and bitterness in this world because of children. But for you who have born, who have born them already, you have a football team now complete with a lance man. Whatever it is, it's already down there. You have them complete. Yes, but what do you do? Come before the Lord and report yourself in the days of ignorance. When I didn't know these things, when I didn't know righteousness, when I didn't know the labor a father will have for children, when I didn't know the labor a mother will have for children, all I thought that they were going to farm and farm for me. They were going to run businesses. All I was thinking, I was not thinking of heaven. Lord, that's when they came out. In fact, I have six. I have seven. Perfect number. I've crossed even the perfect number. I have eight. Tell God so. And let him have mercy upon you. Yeah. Present your ignorance to God and say, God, help me now. I was ignorant of these things. Walk hard to raise up godly children for Jesus. He needs them. Every one of them. He said, bring them to me. I will use them in this end time. I will put my spirit in them and they will prophesy. Discipline the children in a godly way. That's what God desires of you. Discipline your child while there is hope because there is, there is a time when there will be no more hope in discipline. There is a time when there is nothing you can do anymore. Nothing anymore. But there is a time when there is still hope. 
There is a time when you will take the cane and he will, and he will despise it. But there is a time he is still afraid of the cane. So, chasten your child. Use the cane when there is hope that this child will still change. So, put your spouse in the work of child discipline. There is a difference between mother and father on this matter. One is always a disciplinarian. It could be the father that is a disciplinarian. Sometimes it is the mother. When it comes to the matter of discipline, you, the second person, spouse, hold your peace since you are not the disciplinarian. And the mother is now doing her job, a beautiful job. Say, hey, come here, child. Kneel down here and say, kneel down and remain there. Let not the father say, I am a merciful father. Don't say like that. After one minute, you say, it's enough. Tell him to stand up now. Stand up. Stand up from there. Don't confuse these people. Work together. Agree together, of course. Don't go on wicked training either. So that's what you need to know. Know that children are bound to be foolish. Don't think that, that your beautiful child will automatically be doing good. Who told you? Except Jesus. No other person in the world. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. But the rod of correction will drive it far from him. Therefore, always remember to use the cane. Disobey ungodly rules of the government, even in America. And God will stand by you. In these ungodly nations, that is what the Lord is telling you. Unfortunately, some Christian parents in the countries where the government tells them not to beat their children, Submit to the rules, not knowing that Satan wants to get their children from childhood. The, the, the child belongs to you. If you disobey that government, you are obeying the commandment of God. And he will give you wisdom that will direct you on how, on how to handle things. Faith in God and boldness will help you. If you beat your children with the rod, when he is less than one year old, he cannot report you. But three years old, when he, he, he begins school, he will begin, he will become used to the use, I mean, he will become used to the cane on him. So he will not, he will not see anything wrong to go and be reporting you. Start early. Use the cane. Do not fear the government. God will protect you from the government. I say God will protect you from the government. The rod is part of the gospel of Jesus. Withhold not correction from the child. For if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with the rod and shalt deliver his soul from hell. So the cane is part of the gospel of the Lord Jesus. Beat that child. Ask for God. Ask God for wisdom in child training. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Not all corrections involve the use of cane. So be instructed. So that you will, not, you will not spoil your child of a true overmatch beating. Love all your children equally. Do not hate your child or treat him or her as if he or she is a second class among your children. It will provoke that child and you may not be able to, to get his heart anymore. Do not use evil ways on your child. Date and lie are in the power of the tongue. He that loves, loves it shall eat the fruit of it. You are always cursing that child. It is evil of you. Don't do that. That's what we say. Sacrifice for the welfare of your children. Sacrifice for the welfare of your children and educate them. Make provisions for them. Love them. Love is sacrificial. Let your children see what effort you are making toward their well-being. Else they will curse you. Many are cursing their parents today because they did not educate them. They did not provide job for them. If there is no money, let them know it. Call your children and tell them, it is not that I have the money and refuse to train you. Yourselves can see it. Let us bear it. Life is not only in education. You go and learn carpentry. And for you, you go and learn tailoring. And you, you go and do this, you go and do that. God will bless you. See this person. See the other person. They didn't go to school. It was handwork they learned. And it was great for them. Speak good words. Words of blessing. They will hold on to your words. It will give them encouragement. If anybody laughs at them, they will stand on your words. Deal in humility and love with your children. Speak friendly to them. Make your children your best friends. Learn to play with your children. Learn to play with your children. Do not be the type that 
The children run away from as soon as they hear you. Hear you coming or see you coming. If they were playing, they stop as soon as they see you coming in. Why? Because they see you as an enemy. Don't do that. Don't do that. Now, train your children by God's words. Lead your children on the path of truth. Let them know the doctrines of truth. Pray always for your children. Job did that. Keep on praying for them. Bind the power. Some greater forces working in their hearts. Bind those forces. In a program like this, you have an ample time deal with that, the demon in that girl. Deal with the demons in that child. A particular woman met with Jesus and said, my daughter is grievously tormented with a demon, a devil at home. Jesus said, eventually Jesus is a great is of faith. You can go. It's done. Right at home, that devil left. So now you are in the presence of God. Handle the devil in your child. Break that devil. That secret society the child has joined, begin to pour fire there. Keep on pouring fire. We keep on pouring fire. Your prayer request, deal with it. The Lord will answer your prayer. The Lord will answer your prayer. That's what God wants you to know in this matter of child training. It's a serious job. You must give it attention. Otherwise, it may even hinder you going to heaven. For Eli didn't go to heaven, I'm sure, because of his children. He didn't take their matter seriously. He died. Yes, died a shameful death with all years of service wasted in the house of God because of his children. They were children of Belial. So, raise up godly children for Jesus. Train, training is the responsibility of the Christian society. Know that raising up godly children is not only the responsibility of the mother, the father, or the immediate parents. Many people are involved in the duty of raising children. Jesus Christ said, Anyone that receives any of these children in my name receives me. If you can take a child to yourself and train that child for Jesus, you have done a great work. It is Jesus you have actually received and I'm promoting. Get a child and train that child. It is not only the responsibility of the parents, but of the Christian society where we all belong. All of us Christians, children of God, Men and women of God have this responsibility to train the children. Though the parents have the first responsibility. Yes, that's what the Lord expects of us. Make friends, friends with your child to make his obedience, his obedience to you and to your ways easy. That, but do not become too common to him, lest your word loses its own power over him. Do not become too playful also, lest he will commonize and ignore your ways. You can train your relations too. Again, not only parents, but family relations also can train the children, of, the children for God. Mordecai trained Esther. Esther was a daughter to Mordecai's late uncle. So Mordecai took Esther to become his adopted daughter and gave her real training in godliness and righteousness. You can do this thing. You, yeah, you can adopt or train children in orphanages. Oh, you do not have children? You can adopt one, two, three, four, or, in, or the number you want to, according to your ability to train them. He that receives such, receives me. If you do this, you will be doing a good service for God. You can have an orphanage where you gather all these homeless children to give them proper Christian training, and you will be doing wonderful service to God. You can be a children teacher with the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. You can bring these children and teach them. You can go to churches and seek permission to teach the children. Yes, do this thing, and God will bless you. The role of the church in raising godly children. God gave commission to the parents on raising godly children for him. Each parent is responsible for this duty. Yes. But we must also know that the church is commissioned to raise up godly children for God. The gospel commission given to the church includes this duty. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. The word world could also mean people's group. Hence, the world, the world of men, the world of women, the world of children, 
The adults that are in the church come to worship God along with their children. As the, child, as the church seeks to make them know God, believe in Jesus and consecrate in holiness in order to worship God acceptably. Even so must the church do to their children. This therefore means that a special attention must be given to the children to make them understand the gospel message clearly. The church will need the following. Communication skills. Children teachers, effective evangelism materials and teaching aids, a good children church, special program as we organize pressure program for the adults. Church also should organize pressure program for children. The church should place on faithful parents on church discipline who are so careless and make wayward children in the church and society. Parents that are members of the church should be disciplined. The church should organize special prayers and intercession for children, night vigils only for children, to pray for children, special prayer retreat only for children. Because if we don't do this thing, it will affect our Christianity too. So but do go into fasting and prayer, not for program, just children. Have fasting and prayer for children to tackle these demons in children. For this kind, going not out, but by prayer and fasting. The church should fight against witchcraft activities and initiation of children. Yes, pay attention to demonic activities and children initiation among the children that are coming from children, teachers, and fellow children. Demonic agents among the teachers and children should be removed from the, from the fold to preserve the faith of these children. The prayer warriors of the church should visit the children section from time to time to pray over them and to handle demonic cases among them. Well, the Lord, I stop here. You can go and continue. And I pray that the life of your children will change. Your families will change. The Lord will do a new thing for them. Tomorrow, fasting and prayer, we shall spend time to pray for your children. We shall pray, spend time to deliver children in our prayer. Rise up upon your feet and thank the Lord who has given you this knowledge and understanding. The book is available. Even if it finishes, we shall continue to produce the books. So, get this book for yourself. Pass it across to nations. Pass it to your neighbors. Even people who are not members of holiness movement. So, the matter of children should be solved. Open your mouth and begin to worship the Lord. Thank you, my Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for putting this knowledge, for fixing this knowledge in the, in the, in the, in the, in the heart of your children. Parents, men and women, to take care of these children for you. Raising godly children for Jesus. Children that shall become ministers of the gospel. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4800.
0302-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through Him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the living Savior. I believe. I believe.
you purchased me with your blood you are my lord and my savior you left your throne above and took up the form of a servant for my sin I believe in you, you are the living Savior. Savior. Jesus, I will.